everybody. Welcome to our weekly Bible study. This is Pastor Green. We're so elated to have you with us this evening. We are in the book of Hebrews, chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to stand before your people once again and to share the unadulterated word of God. So we are so elated for the opportunity. We don't take it lightly. We know this is serious business rightly dividing the word and equipping your saints for ministry to grow stronger in their faith stronger in their witness and more seasoned in their spirit so we thank you we praise you and we ask it all in jesus name for his sake amen hebrews chapter 2. now this book of hebrews some absolutely fantastic theology in this book. And for those of you that are really serious about doing your Bible study, if you can grab a hold of Hebrews, it's going to make you better. It's going to make you stronger. You're going to have a, a greater appreciation for the person and work of Jesus Christ. Now, the reason why this book was written is because of uh, the Judaizers uh, were making it difficult for the Jewish Christians in that first century. Now, the Judaizers, those were people who, who uh, taught this uh, error, this heresy, that you needed to mix the law with grace. Uh, and, and it don't work. And then when people's lives had started coming apart, uh, the, the tendency was to drift back to Judaism. So what the uh, what uh, uh, the writer to the Hebrews did, he wrote this epistle to clear up a lot of error. He wanted them to understand who Jesus is and how important it is to know the truth about Jesus. If you know if you know Jesus, you're gonna love him. If you realize how important he is to to everything that we do. He is the, the, uh, the center of everything. He's the center of history. Uh, he, is, he is the author and finisher of our faith. So the writer to the Hebrews wanted to, uh, he gave this fantastic book to clear up the mystery, to clear up the confusion. So and now we started in uh, chapter one last week. He began to, uh, he, to make the case of Jesus and he uh, uh, said that he was greater than Moses and greater than the angels and as he was um, making the comparison of Jesus Christ and the angels he did this in chapter in chapter 1 and he, he starts with in uh, chapter 2 with a warning if now as we go through these uh, chapters as we go through this epistle uh, there are six warnings that he provides to the to the Jewish Christians, and the first one is given to us right here in chapter two. So when we get to chapter two, he starts out. Therefore, we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any times we should let them slip. See, because the revelation that they received. Uh, uh, it was superior to the Old Testament dispensation and it came from someone who was superior to the angels. Now, uh, and, and, and let's think about it this way. Now, I remember when I was in, in high school, I had a high school economics teacher. And I learned a little bit from him. Half the time I wasn't paying attention. But, uh, you know, uh, we, we learned about basic economics. Well, when I got in college, I had a professor of economics with the PhD that he got from uh, uh, one of those high-powered schools, and this man knew, in fact, uh, this man had actually uh, run hedge funds. He knew economics. My high school economic teacher, he probably, known, uh, you, you know, uh, he did the best he could. He taught us what we needed to know at that point. But what I learned from the high school teacher was nothing like the guy I learned from college. Well, guess what? When God spoke to the prophets, 
in the Old Testament dispensation, he usually spoke to them through, through the angels. So when the, the writer to the Hebrews made the case that Jesus was superior to the angels, therefore what you learn from Jesus is more important, is more prevalent than what the prophets learned from the angels. When someone more superior is giving the teaching, you need to take heed to what they're talking about. So the Old Testament prophets, they were given their word from the angels, and Jesus came with the word of salvation to us. And the word of salvation is more important than the word that was given to the Old Testament prophets. That's what he's trying to communicate right here. So when he, when he, he, he says to us here, For, verse two, for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, when at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? So, so, so the angels, if you recall, as we you study the Old Testament, remember now the angels, they brought the message of both judgment and, and, and good news. Uh, uh, man and I remember when uh, the angel went to, to Lot when he was at Sodom, and he told him, hey, uh, Lot, you need to move, leave out of Sodom because God's going to uh, send hell for him. Uh, 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 remember now, uh, God spoke to Moses um, in the burning bush. He used an angel, uh, um, and, and, uh, and he used an angel on judgment night in the Passover in Egypt, and, and the law was given by disposition of angels. So a, an angel spoke to Balaam yeah, in uh, Numbers chapter 23, and, uh, and uh, uh, an angel spoke to Balaam, uh, uh, and Hezekiah was given a message by an angel concerning uh, Assyria. And in the New Testament, the angel Gabriel came to both Zacharias and Mary. So the, the angel's message was important, but what he's saying is, the one who brought the message of salvation to us is more important than the message given to the, by the angels, and that was, that was steadfast, that was short. So if the message given by the angels was steadfast, imagine how steadfast the message given by Jesus on salvation is, and how shall you neglect if you neglect salvation? Now remember what happened to the Old Testament saints when they neglected the word given by the angels. Remember Lot's wife. She looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. The people who ignored the message that was given to Lot, they perished. Whenever the word given to it by an angel was ignored, there was hell to pay. There was a penalty. Well, guess what? Jesus brings the message of salvation, and if you neglect that, how shall we escape? Well, guess what? There is no escape. That's what he's talking about. There is no escape. You, if you somehow manage to go through life without salvation, you got an eternity in hell. Jesus brought the message of salvation. If you ignore that, you ignore that. Just like the folk in Sodom ignored the message that was given a lot. The, the folk in uh, Moses' day, uh, uh, they, they, they suffered because of that. Uh, uh, whenever you ignore a word from God, there is going to be consequences. And if it was important to to heed the word that was given by the angels, it's much more important uh, uh, to heed the word given by Jesus, the word of salvation. And if you neglect that, you neglect even more than what they did in the uh, Old Testament. That's what he's trying to communicate here. Verse 4, God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. So not only was there no escape, but what he brought, as I read this, there was also no excuse. Because Jesus performed miracles to show that he was from God. And if he could perform the miracles, then if he tells you you need to be born again, you need to be born again. If you think you got some options. If you think you can get to heaven without being born again, you have deluded yourself. And that was the problem with the Jews. 
They thought they were going to heaven just because they were of the seed of Abraham, and it does not work that way. Just like folks, you can't just go to church. You can't just because your mom and daddy might be saved, or just because your granddaddy was a deacon in the church, just because your great granddaddy was a pastor. You uh, 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 you got two uncles that might be a uh, bishop. Uh, your mama sang in the choir. Uh, your sister is an evangelist. If you don't get saved yourself, you're going to hell. Simple as that. There's no excuse. How should how should you neglect it? There's no excuse. There's no escape if you neglect it, and there's no excuse because we had the revelation from God. God sent his only begotten son into the world in the form of a man so that we can see what it looks like. And then as we pick up in uh, uh, chapter, uh, chapter 2, picking up at verse 5, he gives us more background on who Jesus is. He, he, he gives us, he, he breaks it down even further. See, the person and man, Jesus, he's going to do some things. He's going to subdue all. He's, he's from, from, from the, the fifth verse on, he's going to build a case of why you really need to pay attention to Jesus. Look what he says right here in verse 5. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, wherever we speak. But one in a certain place testified, what is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visited him? Thou made him a little lower than the angels. Thou crowned him with glory and honor, and did set him over the works of thy hands. Uh, what God did, God made him lower than the angels because he gave him the body of a man. But he exalted him above the angel because he gave him the responsibility and the prerogative of deity. He never told the angel any time that you my son. He never told the angel any time that I will make uh, uh, your enemies my footstool. But that's what he said to Jesus, his son. But we see Jesus, verse 9. Who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he... he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. That's some powerful stuff there. So what Jesus did, uh, he, because he died on the cross, we don't have to die an eternal death. Uh, our death, our physical death is temporary as we translate from this life, we go to heaven when we say uh, the, the inner man does not die. When we leave here, we spend an eternity with God when we're in Christ. So, and, and, but look at verse 10. And this is why he did all this. For it became him, for whom all things, and by him are all things, and bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. So the whole idea, why did Jesus come? To bring many sons to glory. That's why he came. That was God's plan. God did not want us to die and go to hell. So he sent his only begotten son into the world to bring many sons to glory. And he, as he brings the message of salvation, you are a fool if you neglect it. And there's no excuse. He performed miracles in their eyes. So there were, and there were many witnesses. So no one can say they didn't, they didn't know it. In that first generation, there, in fact, at the time that this book was written, around 63 A.D., many of the people were still alive that saw him firsthand 30 years earlier. The scriptures were already being written. And there were still many of the same eyewitnesses. They were still around. They could attest to the audacity. They could attest to the authenticity. They could attest to the the, the veracity of the words of Jesus and the authenticity of his miracles. There's no excuse, but there's also no escape. Verse 11, For both he that sanctified and they, and they who are sanctified are all in one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Now, when you read Hebrews, and that word sanctify means a little different from how we use it in other parts of scripture. 
uh, uh, sanctified in, in, in this book is not associated with the work of the Holy Spirit, it, it, but it is with Christ. It's, it's not purification, but consecration. It's not a condition, but a position. So when we are in Christ, positionally, we are sanctified. We are consecrated. Well, Pastor, you don't know, I, I still smoke. I still drink. I still slip up every now and then. But guess what? There's no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. As you allow the Word of God to straighten you out, to clean you up, and you allow the Holy Spirit to work on you over time, you're going to look like who you really are. But for now, you're still a mess. But right now, when you say, Lord Jesus, take over my heart, or you, you, you know, so one of these days, y'all is going to have one of those salvation experiences. We, we're going to come to the realization that my life is a mess. I ain't making it nowhere. I ain't getting nowhere in life. I need to make a change. Uh, I'm going to try Jesus. I tried dope. That didn't work. Uh, I, I tried women sleeping around while you day, that never made me broke. Um, I, I, I try to hang out on the corner uh, that night and make me popular with the, with the fellas, <coughs> but my criminal record's so bad I can't even get a decent job. I'm going to try Jesus. Years ago I did this, uh, this sermon, it was entitled Don't Re Up. Uh, and the idea of that, uh, that message, uh, we were on Paramore at the time and a lot of the boys right next to, the, to where our church was, they were selling dope right next door. They were there before we were. The uh, only reason I got that building because that's all we could afford at the time. It was a great spot. And, and we were outside and I, I, we, we were outside in the parking lot and I preached this sermon, Don't Re Up. And the idea is the dope you got right now when you sell it, don't buy no more. Don't Re Up. I ain't gonna tell you to take your dope and take your stash and flush it down the toilet stool because that might be your rent money. You need to pay your rent. You gotta pay your light bill. But, but what's this is done, don't go back. Try something else. Try Jesus. Uh, put your money into things that's legal. You can make money off legal stuff. The, 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 uh, the, 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 the price of an a, 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 a ounce of cocaine, you could buy an unclaimed rocker at the, uh, 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 at the uh, storage shed, unclaimed storage, uh, put a bid on it, and God only knows what's inside. You just sell it at the flea market. All kinds of ways to make a living without a whole lot of education. I know a guy, he would have bought it, uh, 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 a, um, uh, uh, a 99 cent bottle of Dawn and a squeegee. He started a business cleaning windows. And he was so good at it, he actually got a, a, a contract. He got licensed. It took him $60 to get an occupational license. He got him some insurance. It took him about $40 a month to get insurance because if he breaks somebody's window, they're going to sue him. So it, it took him about $200 of, um, uh, 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 to make himself legitimate. A 99 cent bottle of Dawn. One bucket that God only knows what he got. I bought a bucket from Lowe's the other day for like three dollars and sixty-nine cents. Uh, he could have caught one on, on the side of the, the road for somebody to threw away. But he had a, a squeegee. He paid about two dollars for the squeegee, and he went around washing windows, knocking on doors. Hey man, I wash your windows for you for uh, twenty dollars. He'll he do the, the fact he, I do the, I do this one for you for free. He this is how he did it. He washed one window, the main window. Just one, one piece of the one, and it'd be so clean, the guy said, man, you can wash one that's pretty good. Why don't you go ahead and do the rest of it? That's how he built his business. But guess what? There are a lot of God will give you really ideas on how to make a living without breaking the law. So how shall we escape? Trust Jesus. Jesus is bringing the message of salvation, and if we trust Jesus, God has brought pastors teachers, evangelists, into the earth realm, he equipped us to equip you. So you can learn how to live out your faith 
and do better in Christ than you did out of Christ. I, I heard uh, my wife uh, was talking to the kids a little earlier today. Uh, a day is how you put it uh, when you were living in peace and harmony in your life just a lot simpler. What were your exact words? You don't remember. <laughs> okay. But, but I, I'm just listening to her talk to the kids, and, and when you are live with the peace of God, you don't have a whole lot of confusion in your life. Ain't a whole lot of drama. Uh, uh, when you live with in your means, a um, uh, 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 life gets simple. Uh, you don't need what you think you need. And a 90% 90 will go a whole lot, lot, lot further than a car of 100. And so, and so when we're in Christ, positionally, it doesn't matter what our current state is. As far as God is concerned, all of our sins have been wiped clean when we are in Christ. And even the sins we're about to commit in five minutes from now. There's no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. And that's not easy for some of us uh, uh, to, to, to go a hold of. Because religious people will make you think that because you done slipped up, you're not saved. And guess what? We're going to mess up. That's why Jesus died on the cross. Because he knew we was going to mess up some more. But his blood is sufficient. Verse 12. Say, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church when I say praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God has given me. For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had power of death, that is the devil. So when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he won it all for us. You might not feel saved. You may have some moments of doubt. That's why this book was written to those Hebrews. Because they were, they were a lot of that. They were dealing with persecution. They were dealing with hostile Jews. They wanted them to go back to Judaism. And, and, and there was a temptation to go back. Just like there's a temptation to a lot of new believers who might be still struggling. You, you want to live righteous, but all you know is dirt. I still remember all the stuff I ever knew. I still remember. I remember all the tricks. You know, I, I mean, I've done some stuff over the years. It's cured in the rules I can't mention. But uh, I still remember every trick I knew. I have gotten nothing. I have not done any of those things in 30, 40 years, but I still remember how to do it, and I'm not going back. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to, uh, to live out my salvation with fear and trembling. Because I know what Jesus Christ did for me, and he'll do it for you. This is what the writer to Hebrews is trying to tell these Hebrew Christians. Don't give up. This is the first warning that's given in this book. Do not give up. Don't go backwards. Go forward. Even though it's a struggle right now, go for it. Don't give up. You're going to be tempted to go back to selling dope. You're going to get, be tempted to go back to home because you, you, need, you need your light to be a paid man. They go uh, do a job over there making eyes at you. Uh, you see them boys on the corner saying it. Uh, you looking in your pocket, you ain't got no money. You stay prayed up. You stay close to God. Let me tell you what happened. God will give you an idea that will make you some money without breaking the law. He will give witty ideas. Where do you think they come from? Uh, and, and, and that same young man I was telling you about that uh, that used to do our wonders. Before I got through with him, he used to come by in the morning. I was listening to Jay Vernon McGee every morning. He cut at the same time Jay Vernon McGee was on the radio. And I got to talking with him. And he ended up getting saved. 
he started. Um, I, I think he just walk around with the, with the bucket in the window. He, he, he got. He went legit. He got papers. I was able to get him a, a contract doing all the windows and exterior maintenance for uh, Popeyes and churches. This is about 20 years ago. And, and, and uh, he actually started with his junkie girlfriend. Somehow or another, his junkie girlfriend left, but he kept the business going because he went legit. She didn't want to be lying no more because he wasn't doing drugs no more. But he, he ended up growing the business. Uh, I, I know a young man that started with a lawnmower and a, and a can of gas. Built the business. Now he got his, uh, he got him a truck and, a, a, and all the equipment you can think about. But he got saved, he started walking with the Lord, and God started blessing him with clients. He do one good job and folks say, hey man, why don't you come do, go work for me. Come do mine. And that's how his business grew. How shall we escape? There is no escape. Why should we neglect this great salvation? Big mistake if we do. Because God got more in store for you than you can imagine. Verse 15. And deliver them who brought fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. You see, all the while they were walking in bondage to what the devil was talking about. But Jesus became like them. They died so he could free them. He, Jesus died on the cross so he could free us to live righteous before God. If had Jesus not died on the cross, we'd still be bondage to, to, uh, to our sin natures. Had Jesus not died on the cross, we'd be bondage to our most animal lusts. Had Jesus not died on the cross, we would be subject to the most base friend that entered into our minds. And y'all know all kinds of dumb stuff come through your mind. Come on. You're trying to think that you ever, ever thought you have. It is Jesus Christ that by the power of the Holy Spirit brings into captivity every thought that comes in our mind. So we don't act on those bad thoughts. Because uh, in our flesh, our thoughts are not God's thoughts, and our ways are not God's ways. Verse, six, verse 16. For verily, he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him of the seed of Abraham. Why did he do that? Because God, because through Adam, dominion fell all to Satan. But through Christ, deliverance came, and he restored everything that uh, through uh, uh, Christ left heaven, and he went past the he went past the angels to benefit man. Verse seventeen. Wherefore, in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, being able to secure them that are tempted. So what, for, for, for the, the, Jesus was made like us, his brothers and sisters. He was made like us in every way, and, and he became like people so that he could be their merciful and faithful high priest. Remember, he couldn't start his ministry until age 30 because according to Jewish law, to be a high priest, you had to be 30 years old. That's why Jesus didn't start when he was 16. That's why Jesus didn't start when he was 20. He was only going to be on the scene for about three years, and he, and his, he could not serve as high priest. When they put him on the cross, he was our high priest. He could not expose himself to the crucifixion prior to age 30. That was God's timeline. So in the fullness of time, we read about that when we read Galatians. In the fullness of time, he was brought into the earth of the seed of the woman to bring salvation into the world. In the fullness of time. 
That time could not begin before he was 30 because he is our faithful high priest. And the high priest has to be human. The high priest could not be an angel. But he made him above, he positioned him above the angel, but he made him lower than the angels, and that made him our perfect high priest. Now, he can help those who are tempted, and he's able to help because he himself suffered, and he was tempted. Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to share with your children. I pray that this word will find some resonance in the hearts and the minds of your people, that they will be blessed by it, they'll be strengthened by it, and they will trust you even more. Give us a, a mind and a heart to, to spread, spread the good news. Uh, give us boldness that we might share our witness. Give us boldness that we might live in, in, in this wicked world showing glory and honor to you. We thank you and we praise you and we ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Uh, I, I want to just uh, just a reminder, y'all, uh, I put on my Facebook page my Friend, uh, uh, Reverend Larry Dorsey is trying to raise money to start a uh, uh, a group home residential facility for young men, boys who've been thrown away, and uh, to to avert them from having to go into the system. And we know what happens when they go in the system. So uh, if you if God leaves it on your heart, if you you know. Uh, I'm sure we can find, come up with five dollars, ten dollars, or somebody can give a thousand dollars. But if you help my brother, and I'm actually going to serve on his board of directors because I believe in what he's trying to do. So um, if you um, can can do that, uh, look on the Facebook page, click on that link, the GoFund page for for Reverend Larry Dorsey's um, ministry. Uh, it's um, let me pull it up right quick. Uh, better days. Better Days Academy Inc. Residential House, organized by Larry Dorsey. It's right on my Facebook page. Uh, Y'all help him out if you can. I will be greatly appreciated. If you say you love me, uh, uh, I, I appreciate it, but I love my brother too, because he's doing. he wants to do a great work, and I'm going to help him with that. Uh, we'll see y'all next time. Uh, we're on Sunday morning at um, 1025. Uh, uh, those of you in the area, you're welcome to come on by and, and check us out. Uh, we're always we're going to be on Facebook, and uh, all the uh, all the uh, broadcasts you see on Facebook also end up on uh, on YouTube. So if you want to stream it on YouTube, you can see it on a larger screen. Uh, we'll see y'all next time. I see um, uh, Sister Daisy uh, she, her, her notebook out again, which means she's going to be ready for another message come next fifth Sunday. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. So uh, you think I yeah I saw you over there, girl. Uh, She's been doing real good, and I'm so proud of her. She got a job. A teach, she's a, a, a daycare teacher, and uh, uh, she didn't realize that she was going to enjoy it so much. Them little, little bad children, but uh, they're growing on her. She called them her children now, and that's uh, I just see see the growth, and she's doing such a great job, and I'm so proud of her. Uh, now unto him who was able to keep us from falling, sin us faultless before his throne, with exceeding great joy, the only true and wise God. May glory, majesty, dominion, and power be henceforth and forever, and all of God's people say amen. Now, you can always go on our, uh, there's a, uh, uh, you want to give to this ministry. I'm, all, I'm trying to look out for my brother uh, Larry, but if you want to give to this ministry, you may do so using the cash app. I think the symbol should be on the screen, dollar sign, green, WL. Any gift of any amount is greatly appreciated. Uh, we'll be getting us a permanent facility at some point, but I'm going to, uh, the Lord will open that door when it's time. Uh, we'll see y'all next time, okay? Thank you. And I'll read chapter 3 in advance. Go ahead.